Welcome to this tutorial on the mean, median, and mode. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with these concepts, but this tutorial will help you to gain a better understanding of what each of these measures show and how they are each calculated. Let's first talk about what these measures represent. The mean, the median, and the mode are all measures of something we refer to in statistics as measures of location or measures of central tendency. That means we are interested in how data groups itself around some middle value. When people talk about an average value or a middle value, or even what the most typical value is, they are talking about the mean, median, and mode, even if they don't realize it. These measurements, mean, median, and mode, are what we call measures of location or measures of central tendency. Let's start with the arithmetic mean, more typically referred to as just the mean. When we use statistical data, we are usually talking about the sample mean when we say the mean. That means we have taken a sample of observations and we want to calculate an average for those numbers. This average, taken from a sample, is called x bar. If we were to calculate the mean for an entire population, not a sample, then this would be called the population mean, and it is referred to by the Greek letter mu. Let's see how we would calculate the sample mean x bar. Here is the formula for calculating the sample mean. It is written as x bar is equal to the sum of the x sub i's divided by n. This symbol is the Greek capital letter sigma, and it tells us to sum. That is to add up everything after that symbol, which in this case is all of the x values, all the x subscript i, i going from 1 to n, the number of values that we have. So for the numerator, we start by adding all the values of x, x1 plus x2 plus x3, all the way out to x sub n, n being the number of values, and that would give us the numerator. Then, to calculate x bar, we would divide that numerator number by n. Let's take a look at an example with numbers. Let's use students' grades to calculate x bar, the sample mean. We have here 10 numbers representing the grades of 10 students from the last exam. 69, 98, 82, and so on. Since there are 10 numbers here, n would be 10. Remember, n is the number of values in the data set. The data set is comprised of student grades, and we have 10 observations or 10 data values. So little n is 10. Now, to calculate x bar, we need to first get the numerator, which is the sum of all the x sub i's, i going from 1 to 10. So let's add them all up, and we get 778. Now, to calculate x bar, we take 778 and divide by how many numbers there are, 10. So 778 divided by 10 is 77.8. To visualize the data better, we can think of the mean as a balancing point for a set of data, sort of like a fulcrum on a seesaw. So if I arrange the data as dots on a seesaw, spread out the way they would be from lowest number to highest number, you can see that the fulcrum or the balancing point is somewhere around the middle of the data. The grade of 84 appears twice in the data set. That's why there are two dots above the 84 on the seesaw. This might put more weight, so to speak, on the right side of the seesaw and pull the fulcrum or the mean to the right a little more. When we calculate a mean, every number in the data set is used. So if someone in the class gets an extremely low grade, what would that one low grade do to the mean? Again, think of the balancing point in the seesaw shown here. An extremely low grade would move the fulcrum or balancing point to the left and cause the mean to be lower because of that one extreme low grade. So we have just calculated x bar, the sample mean, by summing all the grades and dividing by little n, the number of grades. How would we calculate the population mean mu? The answer is exactly the same way. We would add up all the numbers and divide by how many there are. But in this case, we use the capital letter, or big N, to represent the population size. The lowercase n represents the sample size. This terminology is very important throughout your study of statistics. It is important to distinguish between sample statistics and population parameters. For the mean, the sample statistic is called x bar, and the sample size is referred to as little or lowercase n. The population parameter is called mu, and it is represented by the Greek letter mu. 
The size of the population is represented by big N or capital N. So we have X bar and little n for the sample mean and mu and big N for the population mean. Another important measure of central tendency is the median. This is the number that splits the data in half with 50% of the values above that number and 50% below it. So if I tell you the median grade on an exam was 77, then you would know that 50% of the class did better than a 77 and 50% did worse. Formally speaking, the definition of the median is the middle value in an ordered array. That is a data set that has been ordered from lowest value to the highest value. The formula for the median is median is equal to n plus 1 divided by 2 or in half for an ordered array. So let's say we have five numbers. Then n is 5, so n plus 1 divided by 2 is 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So we get 3. But 3 is not the median. It tells us the value that we should take from the array of numbers that is ordered from sm smallest to largest. That means we take the third value in an ordered array and we get the median. Here are five numbers, 30, 42, 25, 66, 20. Using the formula for the median, we take n plus 1 divided in half, so 5 plus 1 divided in half is 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Now you might think the third number, which is 25, is the median or the middle number, but it isn't. This is a common mistake to take the middle number of a set of values. The key here is that they have to be in an ordered array. The numbers have to be ordered from smallest to largest. Then we can take the middle number. So here are the numbers rewritten in an ordered array. 20, 25, 30, 42, and 66. Now we can take the third value, which is 30, and that is the median. So when we have an odd number of values, such as in the example we just did with five values, then the median is simply the middle value. But let's say we have an even number of values, for example, 10 numbers. Then 10 plus 1 is 11 divided by 2, that gives us 5.5. How do we take the 5.5th number in an ordered array? So when we have an even set of numbers, you take the average of the two middle values to calculate the median. Let's take a look at an even numbered example using 10 data values. Here we have 10 numbers representing the grades on an exam for a sample of 10 students. The first thing we need to do is to put the numbers in order from smallest value to largest value. To make it easier to keep track of the numbers as I write down each number from lowest to highest, I'm going to cross it off from the original data set so that I don't copy down a number twice or miss a number. Okay, so now I have the ordered array. Now using the formula n plus 1 divided in half, I take 10 n plus 1 or 11 and divide it in half to get 5.5. So the median is somewhere between the fifth value and the sixth value that is between a 77 and an 82. Now we take the average of those two numbers. So 77 plus 82 divided in half gives us 79.5 and that is the median for this set of values. Okay, so far we have discussed two measures of finding the center or the middle of the data. These measures are called measures of location because they give us a feel for where most of the data values are located. They are also commonly referred to as measures of central tendency since they tell us where the center of the data tends to be. The measures we have discussed so far are the mean and the median. The third measure of location or central tendency is the mode. What is a mode? The mode, simply put, is the value that appears the most times in a set of data or the most typical value. We can use this measure for both categorical data and numerical data. Let's first see how we can get the mode for numerical or number data. Let's look at 10 numbers representing student grades. We can see easily that the number 84 appears twice, so 84 is the mode. It's really that easy. But it's a very valuable number since it tells us the most typical value in the data set. And in the set of numbers we just looked at, the most typical value, the mode, is 84. Now let's take a look at some more numbers. Let's say we have 82, 94, 68, 85, and 41. What is the mode for this set of values? Now looking at these numbers, I don't see any number that repeats itself, so what is the mode? 
The answer is there is no mode. A distribution can have no mode. Let's look at another example. Here we have the numbers 84, 28, 0, 92, 48, 0, and 24. In this case, the number 0 repeats itself so that the mode is 0. That is very different from saying there is no mode. A mode of 0 and no mode are two very different things. Sometimes students write down the mode is equal to 0 when there's no mode, since they equate no mode as nothing and write down the value of 0 for the mode. Don't do that. If the mode is 0, write down mode equals 0. If there is no mode, write down no mode. Okay, now let's take a look at one more scenario. Here we have the numbers 84, 28, 92, 84, 28, 79, and 41. So what is the mode here? It looks like we have a problem since there is not just one value that repeats itself, but two values. 84 appears twice and 28 repeats itself twice. So we have two values that are repeated the same number of times, which makes both of them typical values. So what's the mode here? The answer is there are two modes, and this is what we call a bimodal distribution. You can see that calculating the mean, median, and mode is not hard to do, but when you have a lot of numbers in a data set, not just five or 10 numbers, it becomes a tedious chore to add up all these numbers. Thankfully, Excel can do all of these calculations for us. Let's take a look and see how this can be done. The steps for using Excel to calculate the mean, median, and mode are very simple. The first step is to open up your spreadsheet and decide which numbers you want to calculate for the mean, median, and mode. Let's start with the mean. The next step is to type in an empty cell box the function equal, average, and then the range of cells. The range of cells that I'm going to use in this example are in column C, row 2, through column C, row 51. Here we have the student grades in column C and row 2 through 51. So first we click into an empty cell. I'm going to click into cell K7. And we type into the function box equal average. And as I do that, Excel suggests formulas. And I'm going to click on average over there. Okay. And then we have the range. And the range would be C2 through C51. And when I click enter, I'm going to do that in one second. Okay, I'm going to hit return and let's see what happens. I calculated in this box here the average for the 51 numbers. So here are the numbers, uh, column C, grade on exam, and you can see how many numbers I have there. All right, you see that scrolling all the way down to row 51. Okay, there are 50 students starting from the second row. There are 50 students. And I would have had to take each of those numbers, put them in a calculator, and hope I don't make a mistake. Okay, so that's all there is to calculating the mean. Now, for the median, Excel has a function called median. So we're going to type this function into an empty cell just like we did for the mean. Let's go back to the spreadsheet of student grades and see how this is done. Here we are back at my spreadsheet of student data. We have grades on exam in column C, and we'd like to know what the median is. Uh, so what we do is we click into an empty cell. We type in the formula box equal, tells, it, tells Excel that it's a formula, median, and then the range, C2 through C51. And we hit enter. So you can see here we got 77.5, and that is the median. OK, so we've calculated the mean and the median using Excel. And we have one more measure of location, and that is the mode. How would we do that? We would type in mode and enter the function uh, mode.sng and then the range. So let's do that. OK, here we are back at the spreadsheet. Click into an empty cell. Let's type in equal and then the mode, M-O-D-E dot S-N-G, L, and the range, C2 through C51. Hit Enter. 
and we get 77. So 77 then is the most typical value. So we got the mean here, 78.96. We got the median, 77.5. And we have the mode, 77. Now for the mode, the function mode, let's take a look at what comes up when we do function mode. I just want to show you, uh, if you type a brief description in this box here, then Excel searches for a function. Uh, it comes up with mode. It comes up with mode MULT, multiple, and then we have mode single. And you see here with mode highlighted, it says this function is available for compatibility with 2007 and earlier. That is, since we have uh, 2013, we don't need that. We wanted this one, mode SNGL, which is single, returns the most frequently occurring or repetitive value in an array or range of data, and that's what we wanted. And for mode multiple, MULT, that would be if you had an array of numbers and we didn't have that. Uh, so we didn't need to use that. We, we used a simple, just a simple mode for a column of grades on an exam. Okay, so that's it. Excel does the tedious number crunching for you. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and keep learning something new every day.